It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Swamide. Dr. Swamide is a senior and dedicated career member and assistant professor in the School of Indian Arts and Sciences, Kerala University. He has done his PhD from Isar Mohali and postdoctorate from Isar Bhopal and IMNC Chennai. Over to you, sir. Over to you, Swamide, sir. Thank you, Fatima. Uh, welcome, everyone. So today uh, we'll have three talks under this VSSP 2023. Um, Prapti, are you are you here? Yes, sir. Okay. So can we begin? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have with us Prapti Tala from uh, IIT Gandhi Nagar. She is an MSc student there. Um, she will be speaking on Furstenberg's proof for infinitude of primes. Uh, over to you, Prapti. You may begin. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Today, the topic of my seminar is Furstenberg's proof of infinitude of primes. So, as we all know, what are prime numbers? A prime number is a number which is greater than 1 and which has only two positive divisors, that is 1 and the number itself. So, we can say 2, 3, 5, 7 are all examples of prime number. But uh, every time we think whether these numbers are infinite or is it finite. So, the here is the topic that there are infinite number of primes. Uh, there are many ways to prove uh, this infinite number of primes. Uh, one way is the very easy way which is done by Euclid by number theory to prove that there are infinite number of primes. Uh, but today I am going to prove this by topology. So, which was given by Furstenberg in 1955. In order to prove this, uh, let's have a sub specific set of family of subsets of Z. Uh, let's say A, comma B belongs to integers and we define a set as SAB where all the, which consists of all the integers which can be written in the form of A plus NB where N belongs to integers. So, the set will look like A, a plus or minus B, A plus or minus 2B and so on. So, by looking at the set, uh, can we observe of how the elements of this set look like? Like uh, every element in this set, there is a difference of B. So, uh, by looking at this, we think that uh, these elements look like an arithmetic progression. But this is not an arithmetic progression because in AP, we have a fixed element and all the elements next to them will be with some difference. But this is not an arithmetic progression, but it looks like AP. So, uh, here we are have, we will be looking on upon some observations of the set SAB, which will be helpful in proving my theorem. So, for what values of A and B is SAB an empty set? So, by looking upon this set, we can see that SAB can never be an empty set because A always belongs to SAB. So, SAB is never an empty set. And for what values of A and B is SAB a finite set? To make SAB is a finite set, uh, since uh, A a and all the elements on the left side and all the elements on the right side are infinite. To make it a finite set for taking the value of B is equal to 0, I will be getting only an element A in the set SAB, which makes my set SAB a finite set. So, there are only two possibilities. That is, the set SAB can be either a singleton set when B is equal to 0 and infinite set when B is not equal to 0. Uh, we'll be using the fact that we'll not be taking b is equal to b is equal to 0 in SAB set, which is not because a singleton element in SAB that is singleton A will not be helpful in proving my theorem. So, we'll be neglecting the case when b is equal to 0. For A is equal to 0, my set SAB will be S0B. Can you see that S0B is some more structure, not just a subset of Z, but some more structure? Like, S0B will be, S0 will be all NB such that N belongs to Z, which can be written as BZ. So, S0B is a subset of Z, but uh, there is a more structure. S0B is basically BZ, 
which is a subgroup of Z having a binary operation as normal addition. Okay. S zero B is equal to S S A B is equal to S of A minus B. So by looking upon the set S A B, if I replace B by minus B, then I will be getting the whole set same as S A B. So S A B and S A minus B are the same sets. From now we'll be assuming to take B all the natural numbers which are greater than one. Why? Because for B is equal to zero, which is not used for me in the proof. Uh, since all negative numbers uh, and all positive numbers sets are same, so I'll be neglecting all the negative cases also. And why are we excluding one? Uh, for that, we'll be taking an observation that if I take set S X one, then it will be similar to the set S Y one for any X comma Y belongs to integers. Why? Because the set X X S X one. Here my difference is b is one, and the set S X one will be looking like one. Sorry, x, x plus or minus one, x plus or minus two, and so on. We can observe that in the set this, in this set, uh, there is an element, and all the consecutive elements of this set have will be having some difference one. So this S X one will be giving me the whole set as Z. So, if you take any x belongs to Z, uh, S X one will be giving me the whole set of integers that is Z. Okay. Can you observe that S A B also has some more structure, just not as a subset of Z, but it has some more structure. So, S A B set is A plus N B, where N belongs to Z. As we have seen that S zero B is B Z. Similarly, S A B can be written as A plus B Z. Uh, you can see that B Z is a subgroup of Z, Z having binary operation as normal addition. And if I add A, this will be a coset, left coset of Z. So it's not just a subset of Z, but it is a left coset of Z. In particular, for given any B belongs to natural number. Uh, can we say that union of SRBs where R is greater than or equal to zero less than B? So what is this set? Uh, as we know, SRB can be written as R plus N B, where N belongs to Z, which is R plus B Z, right? We know that for each R, SRB is a subset of Z. SRB is a subset of Z for every R. So their union will also be in Z. The only way I need to prove is Z is a subset of S R B. Okay, let's take an arbitrary element in Z. On dividing it by B, there exists a unique Q and R such that this condition is true by division algorithm. So uh, you mean Z is subset of union of S R B? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I'm so sorry. And when you say left coset of uh, Z, uh, I think you should mean left coset of B Z in Z. Yes, yes, left coset of a subgroup B Z in Z. Okay. Um. So I am taking uh since Z belongs to Z on dividing by B, I will be getting this. Now, since this is true for any R which is greater, this is true for this. So it will be in the union of S R B where R greater than or equal to zero less than B. There will be some R in this set where Z belongs to this set. So taking arbitrary element in Z, I am getting that Z in the union of S R B s where R is greater than or equal to zero and less than B. So I can say that Z is a subset of this set, and since both sub both are subsets of each other, I can say that Z is equal to union of S R B where R is greater than or equal to zero and less than B. Now here is one other observation. If there exists some x belongs to S A B, then S A B is equal to x x B, and the other way implication is also true. So let's start from forward direction. Uh, assume x belongs to S A B. So there exists some n belongs to Z such that x is equal to a plus n B. Taking a to the left side, x minus a is equal to n B. This implies x minus a belongs to B Z. Since B Z is my left cos. B Z is a subgroup of Z, 
and by the properties of cosets if h a is equal to h b if and only if a minus b belongs to h so by using this property here i will be getting x plus b z is equal to a plus b z this is what s x b is equal to s a b which we need to prove and the other way around is also uh by going to upward direction we'll be getting backward direction proof so it's uh, we observe that if x belongs to s a b if and only if s a b is equal to s x b now let p be the set of primes and what is the union of s o p where p belongs to all p belongs to the set of primes s o p is basically p z by using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we know that given any integer which is greater than 1 it can be written as the product of primes so by using this fact the union of sop where p belongs to p will be giving me all those integers other than minus 1 and 1 so union of sop p belongs to p is z minus minus 1 and 1 these are the prerequisites which will be required to prove my theorem now basically what What is our aim of the theorem? We need to prove that the set P, which is a set of all prime numbers, is in infinite set. Since this is a topological proof, uh, we need to define what is a topology. Topology: Let x belongs to let x be a non-empty set, and a topology tau is a set of subsets of x which can be which is having some conditions. There are some three properties which topology tau should satisfy. The first condition is Phi comma x belongs to tau. Second one is tau is closed under arbitrary unions, and the third condition is tau is closed under infinite intersections. If all these three conditions are satisfied in tau, which is a subset of x, then tau x comma tau is called a topological space, and all the elements of tau are open sets. And we know that a subset u of x is closed if x minus u belongs to tau. because if because if i take any open set then if sorry the subset u of x is closed set if x minus u belongs to tau because if u is closed then its complement will be open which belongs to the set tau and as we know that tau is a set of subsets of x we can say that tau is a subset of p of x let's take some examples to uh, to know what is a topology Let's take example as uh, tau one, which is a set of which is set consisting of phi and x. Since the first two conditions, first condition that is phi and x belongs to tau is satisfied, so first condition is satisfied. Since union of this set will be giving me x, which is again in tau one, so first second condition is satisfied, and the intersection will be giving me empty set, which is again in tau two. Since all these three conditions are satisfied. X to one is a topological space. For t to two, we are defining as to two as set of all subsets of X. Since phi and X belongs to P of X, first condition is satisfied. And since by taking any any number of subsets of P of X, the union will be giving me the subset of X, which is again in P of X. Hence, second condition is also satisfied. Similarly. uh taking any two subsets then taking any finite subsets of p of x and taking its intersection uh we will again get a subset of p of x subset of x which is again in p of x since all three conditions are satisfied x to 2 is a topological space these are some trivial examples for topology now i need to construct a topology so for construction of topology uh, let's take a uh, some subset of p of x let's say script a which is a subset of p of x and satisfies some two conditions so the first condition says uh, given any x belongs to x there exists ax belongs to script a such that x belongs to script such that x belongs to ax so let's take x any topological space if i take any point in x let's say x then there exists some ax belongs to script a such that x belongs to ax so since taking any arbitrary element we can take any element say y in x again there will be some ay belongs to script a such that y belongs to ay so we can say that x can be written as union of ax where x belongs to capital x 
which is equivalent to saying that x is equal to union of ax, where ax belongs to scripting. The second condition says that if x belongs to x and a1, a2 belongs to script a, with x belongs to a1 intersection a2, then there exists some a belongs to script a such that x belongs to a, which is a subset of a1 intersection a2. So x is my topological space. And if x belongs to a1 intersection a2, this is my a1, this is my a2 which where a1 a2 also belongs to the script a then there exists some a which is a subset of a1 intersection a2 and x belongs to a and this a should also lie in my script a if these two conditions are satisfied in any subset of p of x then we can define a topology in this way where topology is equal to u subset of x such that for every x belongs to u there exists A belongs to script A such that X belongs to A is a subset or equal to U is a topology on X. So how can we define a topology? Let's say X is my topological space. Taking U, which is a subset of X, let's say this set is U, which is a subset of X. Now taking any element in U, let's say X, there exists some A belongs to script A such that x belongs to a and the whole set a should be a subset of u then the collection of all those sets u which are subsets of x will be in the set topology in this case we say that the topology tau is generated by a generating set script a okay up till here it's clear to everyone Yes, Hello. It yes, clear. Okay. okay. So uh, now the main theorem comes from this this place that to construct a topology tau on set X, we are defining a set X as Z. We are defining a topology on Z and taking the script A as script B. And what does script B consist of? Script B consists of all those elements. S A B where A B belongs to Z and B is greater than 1. I am taking my script B as this set. Okay. For taking this element, for defining our topology on Z, the, we need to check the first two conditions. That is first condition and the second condition for script B. So if I take any element in Z, then it is it's easy to show that x belongs to sx3 belongs to b script that is taking any element in x that is any element x belongs to the set x which is my z i should find an element in b, b script such that x belongs to that element in b script so i found that element that is sx3 because sx3 will always contain x x plus or minus 3 x plus or minus 6 and so on so always x belongs to this set so I found an element SX3 in beta, B script. So first condition is verified. For second condition, if X belongs to SAB intersection SCD, then there exists some B, alpha beta belongs to Z with beta greater than one, such that X belongs to S alpha beta, which is a subset of SAB intersection SCD. So I need to find what is my alpha and what is my beta, and S alpha beta should belong to my script B. So we make an observation. Let's say if D divides B, then SAB is a subset of SAD. Uh, this is obvious. Let's prove this. Let's say, take an example to show this. Suppose 2 divides 3, uh, 2 divides 4. So we can say that SA4 is a subset of SA2. Why? Because this set consists of all the elements which are multiple of 4 itself and uh, which are not, let's say, a, a plus or minus 2, a plus or minus 4 and so on. And this set consists of a, a plus or minus 4 and so on. So this set is a subset of this set. So this condition is true. Taking this condition, if x belongs to SAB intersection SCD, then this implies x belongs to both of the sets. 
since x belongs to SAB, we can say that SXB is equal to SAB and x belongs to SCD. This implies SXC is equal to SCD, which we have already proved up, 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 upstairs. Now, since uh, SAB and SCD can be replaced by SXB and XXC, so we can say x belongs to SXB intersection S, SX, SC, SXC. Okay. Now we all know that B divides BD. This implies SXBD is a subset of SXB. And D divides BD implies SXBD is a subset of SXD. Taking both these conditions. Uh, hi, hi, Prapti. Should it be SXD? You mean or? SXC is, e yes. SXD is equal to SCD. So it will be SXD. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Okay, taking both these conditions together, I can say that SXBD is a subset of SXB intersection SXD. SXD, correct. Now, since from this condition, I can say that SXBD is a subset of SAB intersection SCD. This is what I need to find. Now, I need to show that should be greater than 1. It is obvious because SAB belongs to B script and SCD also belongs to B script. This implies B is greater than 1 and D is also greater than 1. This implies BD is greater than 1. So I can say that SXBD belongs to B script. This implies X belongs to SXBD, which is a subset of SXB intersection SXD, which is SAB intersection SCD. So I found my element in B script where X belongs to that element is a subset of SAB intersection SCD. So both the conditions that is 1 and 2 are satisfied for the set B script, which is a subset of Z. Now we can define a topology. So topology to is equal to U subset of Z such that for every X belongs to U, there exists some BX belong to script B such that X belongs to BX is a subset or equal to U is a topology on Z. So we have defined a topology to on set X is equal to Z. It is clear that every element of script B in an o is an open set as any subset of Z which belongs to to is an open set. Why? Because taking any element from script B will be looking like, let's say B is equal to SAB, where B is greater than 1 belongs to script B. Right. So it says that we can take SAB as an element of topology. Why? Because for given any x belongs to SAB, there exists some bx belong to beta. I can replace bx by SAB such that x belongs to SAB, which is a subset of SAB. So every element of script B is an element of topology to. Therefore, it is an open, every op topology to is an open set. This implies SAB is also an open set. Since uh, this is true, for every P belongs to the set of primes, S O S zero P also belongs to the topology to. This implies S zero P is an open set. But uh, it is a surprising thing that S zero P is also a closed set as well. Uh, here is the proof for that. We have already defined Z is equal to union of SRPs where R is greater than or equal to zero and less than P. If I want S0 P, it will be S0 P is equal to Z minus union of all SRPs where R is greater than 0 and less than P. Since each SRP belongs to my topology to, then the union should also belong to topology to. And since it's a, it is a, uh, it's an open set, the union will be also open. This implies Z minus this set will be a closed set, which is equal to S0 P. This implies S0 P is a closed set. And here what we have no, S0P is an open set. So S0P is closed as well as an open set. This thing we need to keep in mind. Uh, let's assume P is a finite set. We need to prove P set is an infinite set, but we are proving this by method of contradiction. Let's assume P is a finite set. So P elements of P will be P1, P2 up to PK. Uh, since the elements of P are prime, I can say that S0P1 union S0P2 union up to S0 PK will be giving me the whole set of integers except minus n and 1. 
taking complements on both sides of this equation i'll be getting intersection p belongs to set p z minus s0 p is equal to minus 1 comma 1 okay now we know that s0 p is closed set so z minus s0 p will be an open set since by definition of topology finite intersection of open sets is also open this implies the set in lhs is an open set and since both sets are equal i can say that the set minus 1 comma 1 is also an open set which is a contradiction as minus 1 comma 1 does not belong to the my set of topology because since every each non empty open set in tor is an infinite set this thing is very important in this proof uh, let's try to visualize uh, i know that we know that tor which we have defined is as u subset of z such that for every x belongs to u there exists some b belongs to b script such that x belongs to b is a subset or equal to u let's say suppose minus 1 comma 1 belongs to my set topology tor so i am defining u as minus 1 comma 1 which belongs to tor so by definition of topology Uh, for every element in u there exists some b belongs to beta such that b belongs to beta and set of elements in b script is sab where ab belongs to z and b is greater than 1 this implies my b will be looking like sab there exists some ab where b is greater than 1 sab such that the set u is a subset of my set b and this is sorry x belongs to x belongs to b which is a subset of u now b is my set sab and uh, u is my set minus 1 1 since sab here we are considering b is greater than 1 the set sab uh, is having infinite number of elements and since b is a subset of u you should also have infinite number of elements which is a contradiction since minus 1 comma 1 are finite in the set u this implies the assumption which we have made that the set p has finite number of elements is false hence we can say that p has infinite number of elements yes the observation which you have made here that let's assume that p is a finite set is wrong and hence we can say that p has infinite number of elements which we need to prove yes sir i am done with my proof okay yeah thank you prapti it's a very nice talk uh any questions Prapti, what would be a reference for this proof? Uh, sir, I took reference from uh, Professor Kumre Sen sir's uh, article and uh, his video and uh, the notes which were shared by Professor Satya, which were uh, the same uh, notes were shared by. This was done by uh, Shrijata De in I think VSSP twenty twenty one. Her notes were shared to me. Okay. I want to ask one question. Yeah, please. I mean, if she can share her screen, that slide then. Like where you have proved that uh, that the set of integer is the union of that S R B where R is greater than equal to zero and less than B. That part. Above, above, maybe. Ah, uh, yes, this part. So, I mean, uh, can you say something more about this union? Ah, uh, you are not uh, like you are muted. I think you have to first stop share and unmute, then again share. Yeah.
Okay, now is the screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, this can be also visualized as since the set SRP. No, no, means I'm not asking the proof. I mean, I'm asking, uh, can you say something more about this union, like some specific property of the union? Like, yeah, yeah, I can say that uh, since uh, we know that uh, SRB is a coset, so coset divides the whole set Z. And union of all distinct left cosets or right, right cosets will be giving me the whole set Z. So we can also say like this also. Instead of proving uh, both the ways around. Yeah, I mean, that is okay. Means uh, My question is slightly different. I mean, uh, this set, the collection, this SRB, where 0 is less than equal to R, less than B. So are yeah. there any points common in uh, any two of these sets? No. Because since these are uh, distinct uh, left cosets, so uh, there won't be a point which will be common to both of uh, the sets. The, so can you say some, something more about the union now? Uh, disjoint, union? disjoint disjoint unions, uh, uh, disjoint sets, and the union will be giving me the whole set Z. Yeah, so we call the sets and disjoint union of this thing. Yes, yes. And you can prove that also, like, uh, if, I mean, can you prove that in, like, orally? If what, uh, if, what, like, if some element J belongs to two of these sets, then what will happen? Just one line two. Okay. Okay. If uh, some element belongs to, let's say, uh, let's say some Z belongs to SRB intersection, S S Q B. Yeah. Then J is of the form what? Some R plus K B and some Q plus M B something. Yes. Yes. Then can you use division algorithm and compute something? Yeah, just a minute. What will happen if you divide Z by B and use division algorithm? Uh, Z I by B, mean, there exist unique, there exist unique elements uh, Q and uh, R such that Z can be represented in the, this form. Yeah, so this K and M are same and this R and Q uh, are same. So, yes. So it is not post like this. Cannot like be, if, Z cannot be, either it can be in either of the sets. Or these both sets will be equal. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's from that's all from my side. Okay. okay. Uh, Chirag, you have some question. So uh, Chirag is yeah, a I have a question. Please. Uh, yes. So we use the fact that every open set which is there is like in, in our collection book. The policy that we took on X, uh, on Z that we took, we use the fact that every open set is infinite. I'm not sure if that was, if it was covered that uh, these sets are infinite or no. And I'm sort of looking for a proof, for example, how would one prove something like that? Okay. Uh by the definition of topology, every element uh, belonging to topology is an open set. So we are using that fact to prove here that since each SRP belongs to the topology to, and by definition of topology, that fine arbitrary union of open sets in to is open. So this union is open. Uh, that is not the issue I'm asking. Why are the sets? Uh, why is it that the collection B that you be B that you took? Why are those sets infinite in the you know the open sets that you take? So maybe the elements of elements of script B. What are the elements? Yes, sir. So the elements of script B will be all uh, family of subsets of Z 
where a b belongs to z and b is greater than 1 right so in 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 this script b all elements are infinite sets right yes i think that is what chirag is asking or something else yes yes sir. i was asking uh, uh, how would we prove something like that just had the definition question the definition of sab if you look at it's always an infinite set if b is bigger than 1 yes this is the definition of sab uh, it will always be an infinite set other than the place when if we take b is equal to 0 it will be a singleton element a in sab otherwise the set sab is an infinite set for any ab where b is greater than 1 okay yeah i think we can move on thank you prapti again uh, for the nice talk